This small island nation, smaller than New York City, stands as the wealthiest country in Asia and ranks among the richest in the world. Its GDP per capita has outpaced that of the UK, the US, France, and several other developed nations. In just over six decades, Singapore has evolved from a colonial trading port into a vibrant financial hub, admired worldwide. It's become a model for any nation aiming to build a thriving, high-tech economy. Its prosperity is the result of decades of meticulous planning by the ruling party, which has held power since independence. But with leadership now changing for the first time in 20 years, the question remains. What's Singapore's secret to success, and can it continue to flourish? When Singapore gained independence in 1965, its first prime minister, Lee Kuan Yew, along with other founding leaders, identified a significant economic challenge. The nation had no natural resources. To establish an export-driven economy and draw in foreign investment, they realized the need to develop the country's manufacturing sector. Fortunately, its strategic location provided a competitive advantage. It has access to the Strait of Malacca, the Indian Ocean, and the South China Sea, positioning it as a crucial shipping hub. Initially, it achieved this by turning Singapore into a manufacturing hub, prioritizing labor-intensive industries to reduce high unemployment rates. However, Lee always viewed manufacturing as merely a stepping stone toward a more advanced economy. He established the foundations, including a robust financial and legal system, a stable and predominantly clean government, and an efficient public transport system complemented by world-class healthcare infrastructure. In the 1980s, Lee began laying the foundation for what is now Singapore's primary source of wealth, finance. Taking inspiration from countries like the US and UK, he relaxed regulations within the financial services sector. The impact of this strategy is still apparent today, with 4,200 multinational companies establishing their regional headquarters in the city. One significant factor for this influx is the low tax rates. Singapore's corporate tax rate is a mere 17%, which can drop to 13.5% or even lower for certain activities. This focus on attracting major businesses was furthered by Lee's successor, Go Chok Tong, who continued to promote a business-friendly environment. Singapore then transitioned its focus toward a knowledge-based economy placing greater emphasis on creativity and fostering the growth of local entrepreneurs. In 2004, Li Xinlong, the eldest son of Li Kuan Yew, assumed the role of prime minister. He understood that in order to maintain the influx of businesses and wealth, Singapore needed to become an even more appealing place to live. With its strategic location, Singapore aimed to become a destination in its own right, which has been crucial to its success. In the 1970s, the country initiated an ambitious land reclamation project. Over the years, this reclaimed land was developed into not just offices and residential buildings, but also vibrant entertainment hubs, transforming the city skyline in the process. One notable initiative was the introduction of the F1 night race. The government also embraced the establishment of casinos known as integrated resorts in Singapore. The timing was perfect, as both the Chinese and Indian economies were experiencing rapid growth. Singapore was ideally positioned to attract the region's ultra-wealthy, offering not only casinos and vibrant nightlife, but also a safe place to invest their money. As a result, the total value of assets under management in Singapore soared from $420 billion at the beginning of Lee Shin Long's tenure to an impressive $3.6 trillion in 2022. While Singapore has achieved significant economic success, its leadership faces criticism from some quarters for imposing restrictions on civil liberties and the media. The freedom of the press and the news media must take a backseat to the essential need for maintaining the integrity of Singapore. During Lee Kuan Yew's leadership, one of the main criticisms was the pervasive climate of fear in Singapore, where individuals felt apprehensive about voicing criticisms against the government. Subsequent governments have also faced criticism for maintaining a firm grip on dissent. Protests remain largely illegal. 
the government is undoubtedly aware that its population is evolving. It has become significantly more diverse and increasingly vocal. At the same time, Singapore must remain competitive as other nations adopt its growth model. Additionally, climate change poses a growing threat to national security. This is the Singapore that Lawrence Wong is inheriting as the new prime minister. Wong, who was raised in public housing, received commendation for his leadership during the country's COVID-19 response and is regarded as having a more relatable approach. Although the People's Action Party continues to be the ruling government, its popularity is waning. Political maneuvering is expected to intensify in the coming years, far beyond anything we've seen before. A key aspect of Singapore's growth strategy has involved attracting foreign labor. However, an influx of foreign workers has sparked concerns among citizens who worry that these individuals are securing too many of the desirable jobs. The accumulation of wealth has introduced its own challenges. Housing prices have surged, and the cost of living has risen significantly. On the surface, statistics indicate that inequality has decreased, yet many residents don't share that sentiment. Additionally, the nation's swiftly aging population will place added pressure on workforce growth and government expenditures. Whether it's addressing discontent or steering Singapore's ongoing transformation into a tech powerhouse, Wong's challenge lies in preserving the hard-earned success of this city-state. Thank you for watching and being a part of this story. Your time and attention mean everything to us. Don't forget to subscribe and like the video to stay updated with our latest stories.